Well, hello there again, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Grab your cup of coffee and a seat because I'm Polly and this is Polly's Power Hour. So what are we working on today? Well, you'll see that this is not a V8 powered hot rod or a pickup truck of some sort. No, this is the Wifey's 2009 Mazda 3 named Maxine. Now, this was her first car and all things considered, it's in pretty good shape, I think anyway. But we're gonna have some maintenance things to do. What I'm gonna call the honeydew list. Because guys, back me up here. Every, you know, wife, fiance, girlfriend, whatever, always has a honeydew list. And this is the honeydew list that I don't mind doing. So, here's why. She bought this car brand new in 2009. It has 213,000 miles on it. And let me tell you, I haven't had to work on it much, aside from, you know, regular tune-up stuff and the occasional coil, O2 sensor, normal crap like that. This thing has been an animal, a, a, just an animal. And I'm not going to complain, knock on wood, 213,000 miles, she hasn't missed a beat. So when it comes to like replacing parts, this car owes us nothing but we owe her a lot. So, let's look at this honeydew list here. We got motor mounts, which we're gonna do today. CV axles, we're gonna do them tomorrow. Front struts, rear shocks. I wanna install an infotainment system, show you guys how that's done. A backup camera, so she stops backing into things. Just kidding, you don't back into things. And paint. I'll tell you why later. And clean the interior, which I've already done. The interior is nice and clean. So. Let's go to the trunk and see what we got. Holy cow. It's like Christmas in July. We got three motor mounts, well, two motor mounts and a transmission mount here. We have two CV axles. This is driver and that's passenger. And then we have the rear shocks. We're still waiting on the front struts. So once those come in, we'll, we'll do that next. But I'm gonna say that all of this stuff is original from 2009, okay? Now, if you're looking at a car of this vintage, say you're gonna buy one for your kid or for like a daily driver because gas is getting ridiculous, right? These are things you might wanna look at replacing if they haven't been replaced already. Motor mounts, CV axles. The two biggest things that'll ruin your day and I'll show you why once we get under the car. So we're looking at motor mounts. We got one here. There's gonna be, a, uh, well, it's really a transmission mount on the bottom down there and then back here there's another one so we're going to concentrate on this one right now knock this one out i'm going to raise the car up and we'll do the other two and that will be that for the motor mounts hopefully so the first mount we're going to concentrate on is this guy right here so in order to get this out we gotta pry against these there we go move this out of the way and you see once we move this out of the way you leave it attached by the hoses but now we have access to all this in here so we got two bolts two nuts and it should come apart I do have the engine supported and transmission underneath Ooh, I was worried there bolts out of here and this thing should come off like so and as you can see oh man look at that that's that's hashed yeah it's no good that mounts in like two pieces and it's supposed to be in one so this is what the new part looks like one piece Here's the old one looks like. I obviously got to get it out of this thing, but 
I think that's where the drivetrain vibration came from. Look, it's all split. Look at that. Oh, it's two pieces. Motor was uh, almost free bird. Free bird! Piss. Diesel truck. So this thing is just kind of pressed around here. So I'm gonna use, this is, used to be part of a screwdriver, but I'm gonna use this and my trusty hammer to kind of work this off. All right, now keep in mind, you have one leg that's longer than the other, right? So this thing is side dependent. It actually sits in the car like this because the frame rail curves like this underneath it. And then this goes to the engine itself. So you want to insert this into the groove until it contacts this, right? We're going to put it back in the vise. And we're going to use my pair of pliers here to start prying up on this metal impregnated rubber. And then we're gonna use a hammer to finish the job. And this is what it should have looked like from the start. Not all wiggly wobbly like it was. So let's go back and put this in the car. So you'll see we do have a ground underneath this thing. This is one thing to keep in mind. Um, the ground looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit it with a wire brush a little bit. Try and kind of clean it up a touch. So this is the part where we find out if I put this on right. And <laughs> bada bing. So what I did was I came up on the motor a little bit. I let me put these studs in. So I'm going to start these nuts. Just so we still have some wiggle room. Alright, so with everything tight, I let the motor down. I tighten these up. Tighten those up. You got to line this up with the pegs. Here and here. And boom, this one's done. Now we get to go underneath the car. The what we call the torque mount is actually two pieces. It's a piece that goes uh, into the frame and then it comes out of the frame into another bushing piece and it goes uh, to the transaxle actually, to the one side of it. So without further ado, let's go underneath and I'll show you what we're working with. All right, so now we're under the car and as you can see, my jack is supporting the engine with a block of wood. Here's the torque mount. It's two pieces, this piece here and this piece here. Make sure when you order your torque mount that you get both pieces. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to the store like I did. But you got three 14 millimeter bolts here and one 17 millimeter bolt here. I'm going to take these out as a unit and then I'm going to put it back in as a unit. Um, I just don't feel like messing with this bolt, that bolt, and whatever else. And then we're gonna have to use the jack to jockey the engine around to figure this out. So here we go. So just like the uh, other mount, this goes together a certain way, right? So. It goes together like this. So I'll take the bolt out the old one, stick it in through here. So now that we're back under the car, I'm just gonna do this installation opposite removal. I'm gonna put this in here and then I'm gonna start this bolt. Always start your bolts by hand, folks. Okay, that was 
started. Now I'm going to zip these in in opposite order. So what I'm going to do is transaxle first, then the bottom, then the middle. Now, unfortunately, the last mount is right here. Uh, I've prided my, taken pride in the fact that I've done a pretty good job of keeping all this battery stuff intact, uh, but now it's a pain in the butt. So this means all this battery stuff has to come out, and the air box too. So we'll disconnect the mass airflow. So it does look like the battery tray has to come out and I'll, you can see it right here. There's a little bit of corrosion, which I don't like. It's probably from one of the old batteries leaking. So I'm gonna take the battery out and we're gonna treat this area for corrosion, spray some rust reformer on there because we don't want it to get too bad. And yeah, so we added a little bit of time to our work here, but in all in all, it's, it's for the best in the long run. So, all right, let's get this battery out, get the rest of this apart. As you can see here, the ECU is part of the battery tray. Now the power is disconnected, so unplugging this isn't gonna be any big deal. So in order to do that, it looks like you push down on this. All right, now that that's out of the way, we get our first view of the mount. Check that out. Hey, uh-oh. That's not good. That's <laughs> definitely not supposed to be like that. So, got a little bit of rust fixing to do here. Paint that up. Paint the battery tray or the air filter box. Cause look at this, this is gross. I can't put it back together like that. It's disgusting looking. I might even have a color that's close that'll match. But this does look like it's black and not body color. So, I think it's gonna be black again. Yay. So I'm going to hit this with a little bit of a scrubby pad. I already hit it with some brake cleaner. Um, I'm not getting too fussy. I have a color that's called cast coat iron. And that's what I'm going to blast on this, these two parts right here. I just want to make sure they don't rust anymore. Alright, forget what I said. It's not even close. <laughs> but it'll work. We're gonna try to prevent for a rust. And then we're gonna turn our attention to that uh, battery tray. Alright, so this is gonna be one of those things that happens outside. 
uh, just because I don't want to make a mess in the garage. And it's a nice day out. So, uh, I've got my makeshift little workbench here. This is the, the strap for the battery that goes in the tray. As you can see, there's pretty bad corrosion. We're going to paint all this. And then, of course, this tray. So first, we're going to remove the little bushings for the air filter box because we don't want to paint those. Back in. And then see how we got some nasty corrosion in here. I'm gonna make sure we get in there the wire wheel. So my implement of destruction is gonna be my drill with a wire wheel. I actually have two wire wheels I'm probably gonna get. Just gonna strip all of this paint off, sand it, and we're gonna hit it with some etching primer to make sure it doesn't rust again because this sits the battery sits on this and the battery might leak. When the battery leaks, you get this. So, there we go. So I went with this fantastic flat, flat, flat black for the uh, tray. And then that's painted down there. Like I said, obviously nowhere near the same color, but it's protected. So now I gotta put this back in. I believe it goes in this way. And I gotta put my nipples back in for the air box. Battery tray, which is already cleaned. And yep. Well, all right, that's all the parts. So, turn the key and see what happens. Oh, well, I got lights in here, so that means the battery is good. Hopefully the engine doesn't uh, 
jump out of the car. Now we got power. this thing down move the caddy out of the way and uh and we're gonna go on a test drive and see if this thing still boop, 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 wobbles at speed already i can feel that the car just feels better like just idling here smoother. She's got 213,120 miles. So let's put the windows up, kick the AC on. So already she feels quite a bit better. Um, the CV axles, you can still feel the slop in them. And the front tires do need to be replaced. But as far as the motor flopping all over the place, and there you go. Test drive was great. Uh, you can still feel there's a little bit of slop in the CV axles. If you're going to go over when we replace them. Um, front wheels definitely need to be, the front tires definitely need to be changed. And she's going to need an alignment soon. But that's going to come after the front struts. Because once you change the front struts, you got to do an alignment as well. So front struts, alignment, front tires. Bada bang. Um, then yeah, motor stays in place. Perfecto. We, we like. Alright, so let's see what we got. We got the old mounts. Two out of three ain't bad. That's what Meatloaf said. So this one was broke like that. And that one was... It's like that old joke where you had your thumb. You take your other thumb and you try to separate your thumbs, you know? So it kind of reminds me of. So yeah, that's no bueno. Um, as the French would say, that's just one of those things that newer cars you're going to have to look out for. The way these sideways I4s and V6s are mounted, mounts go bad. And they're really not that bad. I think uh, for these mounts, we paid, it was mounts, CV axle, and rear shocks, we paid 164 from Rock Auto, which isn't bad. Price is going to vary by type of automobile you have, of course. But, hey, better than this. So there you go. A couple hours worth of work. I mean, I took my time. I wasn't really in a rush. Just working in the garage, drinking coffee, having a good time. So get out there. Go work on something. Uh, across this off the honeydew list, we're getting there, all right? So like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff that helps the channel out. And go work on your stuff. Be nice to each other. And you guys keep it between the ditches and you come back and see me.